How's it going everyone? Uh, third video today and today you're getting uh, two bands for the price of one. Not that you know there is a price because it's kind of free but you know you kind of get what I'm saying. Uh, so today we're still on the A's of the CD collection and today we are doing Anthrax and we are also going to do Alice in Chains. Um, I haven't got completely full discographies with these bands but you know enough to keep you going so uh, we'll start off with Anthrax, and first of all is their first album, Fistful of Metal, which is that one there, and this is their first album, as I say, with uh, Neil Turbin on vocals, um, and uh, Dan Lilka on bass, who went on to join Nuclear Assault, and you know the rest of the band, Dan Spitz, Scott Ian, and um, Charlie Bonante, obviously. Um, a decent album, I listened to it today actually, it's okay. I mean, you can tell it's their first album. Neil Turbin's kind of, you know, a vocalist that, it's, it's old school metal. It's not really what you call thrash, it's, you know, an old school metal album. It's got a few favorites that they still play live, things like Metal Thrashing Mad, it's got Panic on there, uh, Death Rider, my glasses today so I can actually see a really bad version of I'm 18, the Alice Cooper song, uh, Panic, Soldiers of Metal. So it's alright, it's an okay start, production not great, vocals you know okay but you can see why they uh, got uh, Joey Belladonna in for the next album and also Frank Bello on bass when Dan Lilka left and the second album is this one, Spreading the Disease. That's the inside there. A massive step up, in my opinion, from the first album. Massive, massive step up in songwriting, production, vocals as well. Um, one of my favorite albums of theirs, to be honest with you. I can remember the first time I uh, heard Anthrax, as it were, was uh, they had, um, the video for Madhouse on the uh, the TV show Max Headroom. So if you're old enough, you might remember Max Headroom, which is kind of like a computer-generated guy, which is kind of vaguely comedic, but he also played videos as well. Played the yeah, Madhouse video, and it was like, nice. Yeah, enjoyed that, so very good. Uh, got this album, and um, yeah, every track on this, amazing, basically. Starts off with A-I-R. Um, a real like good thrashy one, Lone Justice, excellent track, then Madhouse, um, you've got Stand or Fall, uh, and you've got The Enemy, Aftershock, really good track, Armed and Dangerous with its acoustic intro, really good, Medusa, fantastic track, ends off with Gung Ho, which is, as the title suggests, a full on thrasher, but yeah, a lot of melodic stuff on here. Um, just a real massive jump from Fistful of Metal and an album that I'd recommend any any metal fan to, to have in their collection, so excellent stuff. Um, the next album they brought out is this one, an all-time classic, Among the Living. Um, once again, I remember the first track I heard off of this was uh, I Am The Law, and I heard that on the... Friday Rock Show, which once again, if you're old enough, you'll remember, it was on Radio 1 in the UK um, on a Friday night, and pretty much in those days, if you wanted to, you know, there wasn't a lot of metal on the radio, certainly not, and, you know, MTV wasn't even a thing really then, and uh, so if you wanted to hear any new stuff that, like, Kerrang! were talking about and things like that, you'd listen to a Friday Rock Show and, you know, maybe take that, and, uh, yeah, Tommy Vance was like, and now the new single from Anthrax, and, uh, yeah, I Am The Law, and it like literally was like the heaviest thing I'd ever heard at the time, and yeah, kind of blew me away, really. Got this on vinyl shortly afterwards, and once again, not a bad track on it. Uh, full, like, 9, 10 out of 10 album, similar to Spreading the Disease. Um, the opening track, Among the Living, fantastic. Uh, Caught in a Marsh, I Am The Law, NFL, Skeletons in the Closet. Um, yeah, just a, you know... Not a bad track once again. Full on thrasher. I don't know if I showed you the inside or not. Them looking, you know, a bit more metal than they look on the next album. 
Um, I have got two copies of this actually. This is the Island Masters one. I've got another one tucked away somewhere. Slightly different back cover, but not really much in it. But yeah, once again, if you don't own this album, you like a bit of thrash, then just the riffs are amazing. You know, the Scott Ends of Riff Machine. Um, they were they were flying on this one, so superb. Uh, the next album is uh, State of Euphoria. Um, and this one is the double disc edition. So it's like a gatefold. Got this fairly recently actually. This, I think this is the American version because it's got like Rip magazine inside, which we didn't get over here. Um, and this one, yeah, another, it's a good album. It's not as good as the, the two before it. They just seem they've got a bit more of a cartoony thing going on. They were like, you know, getting about in their Bermuda shorts and, you know, looking like they looked for a while which was fine you know I didn't mind their image at all the music once again is is good but not quite as good as the last two albums be all end all uh, out of sight out of mind they were good tracks make me laugh was the single uh, the first single as it were that's you know decent antisocial pretty much everyone knows who cares wins now it's dark really good track schism misery loves company um, and finale, or finally, as they sort of call it. Uh, this has got bonus tracks on it. Antisocial, which is the uh, French version. Uh, their version of Friggin' in the Ring in. Parasite, which is the Kiss track. The Sex Pipeline, and Antisocial Live at the Hammersmith Odeon. And uh, this too is Charlie's Archives, which is pretty much the album. I haven't actually listened to this too yet, so I need to get around to that. So I don't really know what that involves, but. If anyone else knows, comment that down below and say whether it's worth a listen or not. I'm sure I'll get around to it at some point. Um, but yeah, good album. Not as good as the two before it. Probably the, the weaker of the original Joey Belladonna years. And uh, yeah, I've still saw it at 7.5, 8 out of 10. It's, you know, still pretty good. Uh, then they brought out this one, which is Attack of the Killer Bees. And um, it's kind of like B-sides, outtakes few new tracks that you know kind of comedy related things like starting up a posse uh it's got milk on it which you owe to billy which is the cover of the sod track milk uh it's got bring the noise which they did with anthrax uh keep it in the family live starting up a posse as i say it's a bit of a comedy one uh chromatic death it's got on it which is another sod track i'm the man 91 i'm the man's like a it was originally the b-side of I think I Am The Law, um, which is their rap song that they did. Uh, this has got Parasite, Pipeline, Sex on it, which are all on the, the bonus disc of the uh, State of Euphoria one. A couple of live tracks, Belly of the Beast and NFB. You can pretty much work out what that was. Nice ballad. Um, it's alright, it's for complete it's only, to be honest with you. I got it because it was fairly cheap. And uh, yeah, it's alright. You know, seven out of ten. You know, banter, etc. <coughs> uh, the last album they did with uh, the original lineup, Joe Bell. Well, not the original original lineup, but the classic lineup, should we say? Uh, Persistence of Time. Um, a good album, better than State of Euphoria. Darker. Um, the inside. Lead off single was in my world. Uh, which is not the best track on the album, but it's still pretty decent. Time is the opening track, it's great. Blood's a great track. Keep It In The Family, great track. Uh, Intro Reality, which goes into Belly The Beast, great tracks. Uh, got The Time, which is a famous one. Uh, you got One Man Stands, which is another really good one. Um, but yeah, a good end to the original Belladonna years. Um, lengthy tracks, you know, good, good, good riffs, obviously, you know, Scotty and once again can riff away and Charlie Brown, a amazing drummer, just, you know, great musicians, all of them really. Um, so yeah, great album, probably an eight, eight out of 10 for me. Uh, then Joey left the band and they brought in uh, John Bush from Armored Saint and they released this, Sound of White Noise. That's the back cover there. Um, the inside there, you can see the new band lineup. This one's got this sort of embossed inlay, uh, not inlay, the case, so 
which was the original one. I got this when I came when it came out. Lead single was only, um, which is a bit more, yeah, kind of radio friendly if you like, but still a good track. Uh, Potter's Field is the first track, and that's a you know really really good heavy track. Room for one more, really good track. Package Rebellion, Hyperglow, Invisible, really good. Uh, Black Lodge is, mm, is a bit more of a ballady one. You wouldn't have got that on their first album, so. Uh, sodium pentothal this is not an exit um it's, it's yeah it's a decent album i was disappointed because i mean john bush is a good singer and all you know and he, yeah he can sing that's you know that's not muck about but um yeah i prefer joey to be honest um but still still a good album still a seven and a half eight I, yeah i was disappointed when it first came out but it's, i've grown to you know like it and you know it's just not the, the thrashy anthrax that were they were to begin with. So uh, the next two albums I don't have, which are Stomp Four Four Two and Volume Eight. The threat is real. I will get them if they you know appear to me for a, a reasonable price, but I don't own them currently. But I do have We've Come for You All, which is this one here. That's the back. This kind of like some sort of special edition comes with a slipcase. And it's also kind of folds out and does this and that. We don't know why, but it does. It's difficult to put back together, to be brutally honest with you. Got the book in there as well. That's the thing. I think it's the first appearance of the kind of anthrax pentagram thing. Um, and yeah, it opens up. So we don't know why it does that, but it just does. And it's supposed to make a picture, but to put it back together to show the correct way. I've never worked it out. Um, <clears throat> this one, yeah, decent. Um, it's a bit more heavy than the, the two before it, which I don't really care for. I say I will grab them if you know I can get them. I did listen to this earlier actually, once again. What Doesn't Die, good heavy track to start off with. Safe Home's pretty good. Uh, Strap It On, that's got Dime Bag playing guitar on it, as well as Cadillac Rock Box has got Dime Bag on it also. And. Taking the music back, I think it's got Roger Daltrey from The Who um, on it. But, you know, it's, it's not a bad album. It's not as good as Sound of White Noise. Certainly not as good as any of the Joey stuff. But it's a little bit of a return to form after a couple of disappointing albums. Um, so, yeah, not too bad. I'll probably give that a 7 out of 10. Uh, and the last one they did before Joey came back was this one, which is a bit of a compilation. Uh, it's the greater of two evils and this is the two disc version which has got some bonus tracks on it and basically what this is is I think they did some sort of online poll to be all like yeah which Joey songs do you want to hear John Bush sing basically and these were the winners um, and they go through a selection of classics Death Rider also from the Neil Turbin era as well Melt Thrashing Mad uh, Caught in a Mosh, AIR, Among the Living, Keep It in the Family, Indians, etc. etc. Uh, go to the uh, Gung Ho, Be All End All. And the bonus CD has got the track Anthrax, Low Justice, and In My World on it. And it's alright, they recorded it live in the studio over a couple of days, so it's fairly. But the production is good on it. Um, and I don't know if it does. The yeah, the arrangements are slightly different to the, the ones that you you know originally know. Obviously, the Neil Turbin stuff greatly sounds a lot better. Um, did they need to do it? <sighs> Who knows? But they did, and it's okay. Do you know what I mean? I prefer the Joey versions generally. Um, you know, they're going to do another one with Joey doing the John Bush stuff. I doubt that, but might be all right. But they didn't anyway. Uh, Give it a 7 out of 10. But, uh, 8. The songs are great, do you know what I mean? You can't really knock that. Joey Returns. Worship music. Um, that cover. This is a gatefold one. Really nice presentations on Nuclear Blast. If you do do a nice package for me. You know, really, always really nicely presented their stuff, I think. Um, I think this has got, it's got a book in it, that's it, um, but yeah, nice, good album, good return to form with Joey, um, 
Earth on Earth or Hell, great. Devil You Know is a, a really good like new modern classic for them. Um, Fight Until You Can't, another yeah similar sort of one, which is really really good. Um, yeah, if you've not heard Anthrax for a while or you've kind of got out of them when John Bush was in the band like I kind of did, then uh, this is well worth a listen. Really, really good album. Really nice presentation, good production, old school style, nice. Um, eight and a half out of ten for that one. Really strong return with Joey. And then we go to their most current album, uh, which is For All Kings. That's the second one with the with Joey, obviously by this time Dan Spitz had left, uh, and yeah, it's got the slipcase, this is like a tour edition or something, limited edition, two CD digipack, bonus EP, and yeah, once again, Nuclear Blast, awesome presentation, really nice set. And uh, you got to believe, good track to start off with. Monster at the end, really good. For All Kings, really good track. Blood Eagle Wings, really long, good track. And uh, yeah, it's got a couple of live tracks on the bonus CD. They're like Fight Until You Can't from the last album. AIR, Caught in a Mosh, Madhouse. Pretty standard stuff, but yeah, another really good album. Another good eight out of 10 album for All Kings. Looking forward to them releasing a new one, which would have been out by now if I hadn't been for the whole COVID shenanigans. Um, next year, they're saying, so we'll look forward to that. Hopefully it's a banger, I'm sure it will be. You know, they seem to have a bit between their teeth again, so they've had a long time to do it, although obviously Banana is now getting involved in the Pantera reunion. Let me with here know what you think of that. Personally, I'm a great fan of Pantera, but it ain't Pantera without Dimebag and Vinnie Paul. So, you know, it'll be good, but is it Pantera? I'll leave that up to you. So that was Anthrax. So uh, yeah, decent discography. Not all of it, but you know, pretty pretty cool. Um, now we're going to my Alice in Chains. Uh, first album was Facelift. Um, pretty good album. Well, very good actually. Good debut, um, and it gives you a, you know yeah a good of where they were going to go, Man in the Box, obviously classic, We Die Young, Sea of Sorrow, really good track, uh, Bleed the Freak, I can't remember, brilliant track, Love Hate Love, it's a really good album actually, <laughs> uh, it ain't like that, that's a bit of a weak one, and the last one, well I know something about you, that's not brilliant either, but uh, Put It Down's alright, Sunshine, really good, Me, uh, haven't listened to this for a while actually, need to put this one again. Um, yeah, first album and really good. I kind of preferred this to Dirt for a while, um, just because it's a little bit lighter and Dirt can be, you know, heavy and dark. But you know, this one, yeah, a good eight and a half out of ten. Really strong album, good, excellent. Um, then came Dirt, which I've just previously spoken about. Second album, probably their most famous album. Um, kind of speaks for itself. Then Bones, uh, Damn That River, Rain When I Die, Rooster, title track, the amazing track, um, Angry Chair, Sick Man, yeah, Wood, all really good. Down in the Hole, really good track as well. Um, yeah, darker album, the first one, heavier. Um, I've had this for ages, man. Well, since it actually came out. So, uh, yeah, we we played the hell out of this, me and my brother, when we were younger. So, I've listened to it a lot. Um, revisit it re fairly recently, actually. It still sounds really good. And saw them on this tour with Lane as well at the uh, Bristol Academy. And they were cool, man. Um, they steadily smoked a lot of cigarettes on stage, which, you know, for me, was a strong look. Uh, next one is they did the Jar of Flies slash Sap double EP. It comes with two discs. And uh, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's obviously acoustic stuff. There's some good stuff on here. 
Jar Flies is slightly better, Ryan Apple, no excuses, is a really good one. Um, Sap's only got four tracks, brother, got me wrong, they kind of released that before, but they re-released it like it's a double pack. Um, it's okay if you like the lighter side of them. Um, but yeah, I got this when it came out and it was a bit like, well, you know, it's okay, it's good, but it's not amazing. Um, but yeah, not bad, 7 out of 10 for that one. Uh, then they brought out this. This is the last one with Lane. Um, this is like the purple disc edition, whatever. It's got the three-legged dog on the front. Some sort of weird-looking dude on the back. And yeah, this one when it came out once again was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, just wasn't as good as the previous two. Um, yeah, so it didn't get quite as much plays as the first two, which got loads. Heaven Without You, Heaven Beside You, sorry, <laughs> is a good one. Shaming You, yeah, need to give this another listen. Maybe with uh, hindsight, it'll sound better, so I'll give that another blast. But I can remember when it came out, I was not overly thrilled with it and thinking. Yeah, but that was the last one with Lane, so it's a you know a bit of a sad way to a end, really. Because you might disagree. Let me know below. But yeah, not not the greatest. I didn't think. Uh, then they reform many years later with William Duval on vocals. It does sound a lot like Lane, to be honest. And uh, they came back with uh, this one. And uh, yeah, we'll get black gives way to blue. And it could have been horrible, but it's actually pretty good. Um, all secrets known, good one. Check my brain, lust of my kind. Yeah, that's a bubble, lesson, lesson learned, really good. Um, yeah, so a good, a good return. I'd say not as good as their classic stuff, but um, still you know, a strong, worth listening to, for sure. So if you've not checked out the most recent Alice in Chains stuff, then that's a good place to start. I'd give that seven and a half. And then they did this one here, Devil Put Dinosaurs here. Which is the second one they did with Duval. And uh, pretty done, really good track actually. Devil Put Dinosaurs here is a really good track. This one I've listened to more than the previous one. Um, but yeah, so I'd rate this a bit higher. Um, probably rate that one as a, yeah, seven and a half, eight out of 10, that one. So yeah, good album. They've done uh, another album since then, Rainy and Fog, but I don't have that one. I have listened to it and I thought it was okay. Not as good as the previous two, but maybe I just need to give it more listens and yeah, I'll probably pick that up. Uh, a key point when it becomes, you know, a more reasonable price. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Anthrax, Alice in Chains, coming to the end of A's. We've got a few things to do, a few bits and pieces that I'll uh, finish off with. I've got things like Arctic Monkeys, a few albums by Accept, um, and I later, and uh, a couple of surprises maybe as well. So I'll do them in the next video. Hopefully it won't be too long. I'll have to check out, see how many more I've actually got. Maybe it might be two videos, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you could please yeah, like the video, subscribe to my channel, um, and press the bell icon so you get notified of any videos that I do in the future, which shouldn't be too far away. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Take it steady. Cheers. Bye-bye.